Chapter 9, Proper Evidence Management. This presentation will be fairly short, only 11 slides. Make sure you read the chapter in detail. You know, there's a lot more information in there and um, you know, much more than I really want to get into in this, in this presentation. Now, in evidence management, um, you as a forensic accountant, whether you're working on a fraud examination case or a business damage case or a business valuation situation, you need to preserve the evidence. So, there are certain procedures you need to follow. Again, this just comes with experience. Uh, we'll cover the, the highlights here. But if you have any questions, do your research. Contact the attorney you're working for. Let's get started. Rules of evidence. The rules of evidence are the rules governing the admissibility of evidence in a legal proceeding and the weight to be given to evidence that is admitted. What is evidence? I'm sure you've seen the TV shows and movies and so forth about court cases and evidence and everything. But this is evidence here is testimony, writings, and material objects offered to prove an alleged fact or proposition. There can be direct evidence, and just as the name says, evidence that directly proves a fact at issue without the need for any inference or presumption. Direct evidence. Circumstantial evidence, and I know, you know what, I know you know what this means, evidence from which a fact at issue may be proved indirectly. Okay, So circumstantial evidence does carry a lot of weight. Sometimes we look at the movies and TV shows, and people say, oh, that's just circumstantial evidence. Don't worry about it. No, you need to, to know this is important. So if you don't have good direct evidence, you can still win the case if you have excellent circumstantial evidence. Privileged communications. I know you've heard about this. You know, if you are working with your attorney, let's say you were the plaintiff or defendant, you have privilege. Anything you and your attorney talk about in documents you share back and forth just between yourselves, that's protected. Any work the attorney's doing, that comes under the work product rule. Um, also, let me throw in here that any work that a consultant, an accounting consultant, is doing for an attorney, not an expert witness, but a consultant only, that falls under the work product rule and should be protected. Um, when I say protected, I mean the other side does not have access to it. And you've heard about the medical privilege, spousal privilege, and other types, you know, religious and governmental. And, and governmental can be like uh, a state secrets, that kind of thing. The hearsay rule. Now, hearsay is an oral or written assertion other than the one made by the declarant while testifying at the trial or hearing. In other words, I heard someone say something. I didn't say it. I'm not, you know, I'm not the one that said it. Uh, but someone told me that he or she heard someone say something or they saw something and you heard it, you know, it's like secondhand. That's sort of hearsay. As a general rule, hearsay evidence, well, hearsay is not admissible as evidence. Now, expert could use the hearsay uh, evidence like um, for some technical reason, they call accounting records, actual records themselves, hearsay uh, I don't understand that, but that's where the accountant, the expert witness, can use records to then bring evidence to court and then express an opinion. There are three concepts underlying the exceptions to the general rule barring hearsay. Trustworthiness, you know, the judge could deem it's trustworthiness. The unavailability of the person who declared a statement. So I heard someone say something, but that someone is not here to testify. That might be allowed. And then other practical considerations the judge you may consider. To be admissible, evidence in legal proceeding, document, other material must be authenticated. Demonstrative evidence. This is a, a fancy term. It's not a new kind of evidence. It's just taking the evidence you have and preparing a chart or a graph, or a, a photograph, a video, or a model. So, again, this is just putting evidence you already have together in a form that's easier to see and hopefully understand by the judge and or jury. Now, co client confidentiality. 
a couple things going on here. You want to make sure that the attorney and the client, so the attorney and the plaintiff, or the attorney and the defendant, that communication remains confidential. Okay. You don't want to step in between there, overstep your bounds, and then cause something that would have been protected to all of a sudden be available to the other side. When you read through these bullet points, make sure you pay close attention to the words consultant and expert. We talked about the consultant. That's the accountant working behind the scenes. They will not be an expert. Then you have the expert. That person is identified by the other side, can be questioned by the other side in a deposition or in the courtroom, and prepares a report. So, you know, when you read through these, I'm not going to read all of them, but we read through them, pay attention to the consultant versus the expert in here. Evidence management, you don't want to destroy evidence. So don't start marking on the paper that you have the documents. Don't staple it. Take care of it. Um, make sure you, you have a chain of custody. You need to protect it. If you have it in your possession, it needs to be locked up, chain of custody, a sign-out sheet, whoever obtains it, when, when it was taken out, when it was returned. Very important because you have seen those court cases on TV where, you know, someone along the line did not protect the evidence and therefore the evidence is thrown out of court. You don't want that to happen to the document you're relying on. Make sure you store the originals in fireproof safes. Uh, protect material with the password, make backup copies, and then it says the last one, copy, inventory, and index evidence so it can be reasonably, uh, readily found when needed. So again, you as the expert, again, going back to whether it's a fraud investigation or you're working in a court case as an expert or you're doing business evaluation, any kind, you know, and that could end up in the courtroom also, a business evaluation. Anytime you have anything you're relying on, any kind of evidence, you need to protect it. You don't want it thrown out at a later on uh, date in court. Now, again, talk to your, your attorney, the one you're working for, and they will help you on finding out how to protect the evidence. Okay, so that's it for chapter nine. Good luck with your studies.